Pa i ovo nije to guma, može biti kao pantomima. Nije ovo prije to prezentovati. I onda će tri, ne znam, aha, to ste i to. Nešto, od prilike, ne morate sad. Ili guči, ili kako god. Vi zamislite da nekom da se ište kao. Skupite kratine. Nije što morate čitavom polukom ovako, nego u svoju zupu samo. Ako neko bude želio, može i...
ne smijem da kažem da dođu ljudi na te vice, ali ako možete i to, šta god želite. Dobro nam došli, a ja prepuštam dalje kolekcijama da ćemo počne. Hvala. Chinese. Okay? Be careful because we might need this later on. You will see why. 
One of my most treasured memories was my mother showing me the beauty, the shape, and the form of Chinese characters. Ever since then, I was fascinated by this incredible language. But to an outsider, it seems to be as impenetrable as the Great Wall of China. Over the past few years, I've been wondering if I can break down this wall so anyone who wants to understand and appreciate the beauty of this sophisticated language to do so. I started thinking about how a new, fast method of learning Chinese might be useful. Since the age of five, I started to learn how to draw every single stroke for each character at correct sequence. I learn new characters every day during the course of the next 15 years. Since we only have five minutes, it's better that we have a fast and simpler way. A Chinese scholar would understand 20,000 characters. You only need 1,000 to understand the basic literacy. The top 200 will allow you to comprehend 40% of basic literature, enough to read raw sign, restaurant menu, to understand the basic idea of the web pages or the newspapers. Today, I'm going to start with eight to show you how the method works. You ready? Open your mouth as wide as possible until it's square. You get a mouse. This is a person going for a walk. Person. If the shape of the fire is a person with two arms on both sides, as if she was yelling frantically, help, I'm on fire. The symbol actually is originally from the shape of the flame, but I like to think that way, whichever works for you. This is a tree. Tree. This is a mountain. The sun. The moon. The symbol of the door looks like a pair of saloon door in the Wild West. I call these eight characters radicals. They are the building blocks for you to create lots more characters. A person, if someone walks behind, then is to follow. As old saying goes, two is company, three is a crowd. If a person stretched the arms wide, this person is saying, it was this big. Okay. The person inside like the mouse, okay. the person is true. Look into all the characters, but you get the idea how she certain tricks to help people, people memorize the, the, the symbols. So let's just check quickly if you remember these eight that she mentions. Okay, so let's see. Do you remember what uh, this is? Person. person, yes, because there was a person like walking. Okay, do you remember what? Uh, what fire. was this symbol? Door. 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 Mm -hmm. Because she said it's like an old mm -hmm. cowboy saloon's door, double door. Okay. Uh, what about this? Fire. 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 fire because she's like person saying frantically fire, fire. Okay. So basically you see how by using some visual tricks, it actually remembered Chinese characters that, that uh, people use, uh, learned for years and years, okay? Now let's move on to the uh, presentation. Uh, now we move on to the second part, talking about idioms, and I will tell you more about, uh, about uh, why we chose this topic. Well, I'm sure you already know what idiom idioms are, or that you already know some of them. Uh, I'll just say, repeat, that uh, idioms are expressions whose meaning is not predictable uh, from its elements. For example, kick the bucket. Kick the bucket, it has nothing to do with literally kicking the bucket. What does it mean, do you know, to kick the bucket? It means to die, to die. And when I first heard the idiom, I imagined someone falling on the floor and accidentally kicking the bucket. That's how I 
memorize. Some of them are very similar to other uh, idioms, uh, like adding fuel to the uh, fire. We say, how do we say, and uh, idioms are uh, very important to, uh, to understand, although you can uh, get away with, without, get away in the communication without using idioms, you will sound more uh, fluent and you will, uh, you will uh, be more communicative in colloquial language, in everyday language. You will sound like a native speaker. Uh, in my opinion, it is not possible to evade or to, to, to evade idioms altogether uh, when, when we speak. Uh, idioms are fun to learn because they can be welcome. Thank you. 
what they are thinking about, they will say, a penny for your toes. Yeah, a penny for your thoughts. <laughs> That's the expression. Okay. Uh, as you can see, uh, we, we put some illustrations uh, for some idioms uh, just to give you a hint how to illustrate an idiom. Okay. But you will see not all of them will be with illustration because we want to uh, also have you, uh, we want you to be creative as well. Next one is to go home turkey. As you can see, you see a turkey in the first picture, and the turkey says, I quit. So, for example, if I'm a heavy smoker and I smoke every day and it's just influencing my, my uh, health all the time, and then one day I just say, Okay, I quit. I'm going to go turkey. And you know how people, when they have some addictive substance, when they use some addictive su substance, when they stop using it, they have some kind of like a fever, or they feel terrible because their body wants that, that drug. For example, me when I don't eat enough chocolate. <laughs> and every day I'm going to go turkey. I won't eat that much chocolate anymore, but then <laughs> it's never much chocolate with me. The chocolate, the chocolate, never. <laughs> okay, so basically, you go cold turkey when you decide to stop using addictive substance or the rest. A habit, a bad habit. Okay. Next one is to cry over spilled milk. Okay. For example, uh, let's say uh, um, uh, my student comes and uh, drops my uh, pen, and I start like, "Why did you do that? Like, I want my things in order." And then my student said, "Okay, there's don't cry over spilled milk. Okay. It's not a big deal." Or for example, uh, if uh, if I do something, uh, if something bad happens to me. And, but I cannot, uh, I cannot bring that to time. So like there's no use crying over, over, uh, over okay. spilled um, milk. Something happens okay. and that's it. Okay. Uh, next one is to uh, have itchy feet. Uh, this is one of my favorite because I like traveling. So uh, every time actually I, I just want to quit work and go traveling, it's basically I get itchy feet. So if you get itchy feet or have itchy feet, you actually uh, want to travel. Well, okay. change the situation. Yes, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, when pigs fly. Uh, the train station will be renovated when pigs fly, or if a boy asks a girl out, then she will never go out with him. She might say, I will go out with you when pigs fly. There is even a, there is also an expression when the hell freezes over. Have your head in the clouds. Uh, well, uh, if a person has uh, his or her uh, head in, in the clouds, it means that she's not really paying attention to what's happening around her or that everybody else is trying to do something and do something. It sometimes happens uh, to everybody. Uh, or she has, uh, she has, uh, or she has her head filled with unrealistic ideas. For example, Lolita has has her head in the clouds if she thinks she will win the tournament. Basically, she thinks she will, but she won't. For the problems, bite off more than you can chew. It happened sometimes to everybody, especially when we were kids. So that you bite uh, off a piece of bread or something more than you can chew. And it's not uh, pleasure, it's not easy. And it means that we try to do something that is too difficult for, for us. Uh, there is an expression in our language called uh, mm -hmm. uh, For example, I bit off more than I could chew when I volunteered to manage three uh, little league teams in one season. So we did a family job of that. I thought more than I could chew. Next one, it's also one of my favorites. Okay, so uh, if, if somebody is, for example, all the people are in a stressful situation, but one person is just like as cool as a cucumber. Okay, I don't care, I'm cool, whatever happens, I'm just fine. I don't care about the stress and all the fuss around me, I'm just as cool as a cucumber. And you can see that this video maybe based on the fact that in hot weather, the, uh, the inside of the cucumbers remain cooler than the air. Okay, so maybe there's, there's some reason to it. Uh, if you have example sentence here, everybody was upset when they saw that Margaret's ex-boyfriend came to the party, but she was as cool as cucumber. Like she, she wasn't upset at all. 
Of course, the expression now on that is x is always a big one. What do we say? What we Okay, next one, a storm in a teacup. A uh, storm in a teacup uh, can be a situation when somebody is, uh, somebody does something that's not very important, but the, the person uh, is really upset. And then we say, why, why are we making that fuss? Or it's like you're making a storm in a teacup. Basically, making a lot of trouble and having a, expressing a lot of anger and worry about something that's not that important. Uh, for example, somebody scratches uh, your dad's car and your dad comes, oh, what happens? And your mom says, well, I think you're making a story in a teacup for this. It's just a tiny scratch of the car. Okay? A lot of <laughs> <laughs> to be snowed under. Uh, you can literally imagine a person <laughs> sitting and working along there, like all the teachers are doing all the paperwork, mm -hmm. and you're like just snowed under. When you have too much uh, work overload, too many things to do, then you're just snowed under. Uh, you can also use it with a preposition with. We've been snowed under with urgent cases. So when you have too much work, you are snowed under. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you did you forget to, to mention uh, tighten, tighten your belt? belt. Yes. yes, tighten your belt. Yeah. Tighten your belt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we also. So, bonus. <laughs> bonus. Tighten your belt. When do we tighten uh, our belt? Belt. It depends on the <coughs> Then the pants are loose. Okay, when the pants are loose. And loose. Yeah. They are usually loose when we lose some weight. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah, tighten your belt true. basically means. And you say, you know, we spent too much money on that holiday, now we need to tighten our belts. To spend less money than, than we used to because we have less. We also use the same expression, same in our cash. Mm -hmm. okay. So, exploitation, it's an action, it's profession. <laughs> okay, so we were talking about uh, mnemonics. Mnemonics are tricks that are used to remember words, one of the, or, or anything basically, tricks to remember something. And uh, rhyming is also a way of, of uh, remembering special words. So if you want to, to uh, uh, learn words, if you learn words that are maybe uh, uh, that, that rhyme, then it's faster to, to, uh, to learn them. Then you learn them faster. Okay, so now it's your turn, basically. We're going to work in teams, in three teams. I don't know, it's your team. Okay. Hmm? You have write, writing center, you have a pantomime center, and you have a, the drawing center. In the drawing center, you get, uh, for example, if you are group uh, one, you come. Each of you will take one piece of paper and have to illustrate this uh, idiom. For example, bite off more than you can chew. It doesn't have to be uh, uh, like the best artistic word of the work of the century. It just has to illustrate the mean, uh, the, what, what the idiom is about. Okay. So I'll show you how one of my students actually illustrated when pigs fly. You see that the pig looks like whatever. <laughs> It's fine, but yes, we can still get, you know, what what we, uh, what idioms we are learning, then we can definitely see that then, then we can be related to the pigs uh, and flying pigs. Uh, again, what would be this one? Story and Tika. So when you draw, don't stress yourself about uh, being the best in drawing, unless you really like drawing, then you can express yourself, of course, that's always welcome. But don't stress yourself, just try to uh, illustrate as uh, the, the idiom. Okay, and this is the pantomime center. In this pantomime center, you uh, again, you uh, take one, uh, you take one uh, paper. paper. Thank you. <laughs> one piece of paper, and you have to you have to act out the game. So I have here a storm in a teacup. How can I act it out? Okay, so let's see. This is the cups, and then you can maybe relate it to the to the. Uh, 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 in a teacup, the other members have to guess what, what the person is, is acting, okay? Uh, so uh, you, each of you will get one color. So for example, greens, the greens will take from this, okay, pack of cards, and the, the pink one obviously from, from this one, and the blue is from this one, okay? So here you work individually, you draw individually, 
Okay, when you finish one idiom and you draw it, you move on to the next one, you take the next card. Okay, uh, and then when you finish this center, you will take your drawings with you, okay, to the next center. And this is the writing center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, uh, in the writing center, you will work in pairs. So find a partner in your, in your group, work in pairs, and you will have uh, six idioms on one side and uh, you, will, you will have to write an example sentence for each idiom. It can be a very simple sentence. It can be a very simple sentence. It doesn't have to be 100% correct, not very good, but it has to illustrate the, uh, the idiom. And later we will uh, teacher uh, and my colleague and I will help you to correct any sentences. And also as you work, We'll, we'll be here to help them. Yes. We'll monitor you. So when you finish, when one group finishes one center, they move on to the next center. Mm -hmm. And that's how you circle. So you have three paths. Yeah. Clockwise, we don't make it clockwise. Mm -hmm. It's more so for you than I will. Yes. Uh, see, then you, the goal is to actually have you mix them, obviously. Pa može biti da sam da leti, da bude jedan pig slaj. Ja ću da red bol na stati. Ja, i svi ti ću. Ja, Ja, 
What animal is involved? Some wine, man. Yes. Okay. Barking up. Yes. English dogs don't say wow, wow, they say wow. That's wow in English. Ah, 
Okay, now focus, please. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Emila, and I'm here with my two friends, Anka Amila and Dima. We are students from a primary school uh, tuition, and we are here to celebrate the yeah. European Language Day, uh, Day of Languages. Now we're going to, uh, to, to do a little quiz. These are the short and really these are the questions. If you have to go through, you will have to. Oh. If you can go to these questions, then we will have five minutes. Ah, but. And then ten. Hold on. So two questions in uh, two tasks to do here. Uh, first, which language is, is the one which has these words the same? And another one, which of these words have the same meaning in your language? And the last one, we'll get to this. We'll get to this after we finish with the questions with your uh, answers. English is a popular language worldwide. 
when it arrives and English starts. Why English? You'll see. Why English? But we'll see. was which language has the largest number of speakers? Um, so you have English, Spanish, or Chinese. Then someone... Chinese. 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 And that's correct. The yeah. answer is Chinese. It's spoken by 1.2 million people. Yes, that is correct. have different dialects of Chinese, but they all can be considered as one language. And now you know a couple of Chinese characters as well. Yes, that's English. That's what I could do. So the second it's the a trick question. question is which language is the most widespread in the world? And again, you have English, Spanish, and Chinese. English. English. That is correct. They have diaspora numbers of native speakers. Chinese far outstrips English, but that's not the okay. word they use. Chinese is spoken so almost it's exclusively. Down. Okay. okay, here we go again. They have absolute numbers of native speakers. Chinese far outstrips English, but that's not what widespread means. Chinese is spoken almost exclusively in China and a handful of nations in East and Southeast Asia. So the answer in this case is English. Here we have a map and the purple colors uh, are where English is most spoken. English is spoken nationally in at least one nation on every single continent. This map represents the distribution of languages in the world. The color of English is purple. As you can see, it is spoken on every continent. Apart from international politics, English is recognized as the default language of choice in the world of academics, business, science and technology, films and music, literature, and news distribution. Whether you like it or not, English is everywhere. Okay. Uh, the third question was, uh, or rather the third task was, uh, read the text and try to guess in which language the capitalized words mean the same as in English. And can you guess? In which language do these words have the same meaning as in English? Can you guess? Any clue? Mm -hmm. No. You get to try. Try. Yes. You try to get a German name in French or Bosnian. Bosnian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bosnian. Yes. 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 But all of the, but, but not all of them. I should laugh. Some of them. Yes. Some of them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, the answer is well. The answer is Italian. All these words have the same meaning in Italian. Uh, Italian is not the only language where people use the word for English in their everyday language. Uh, most languages of the world have been affected by the expansion of English. 
The value of the English language can be illustrated by the big influence it has on so many other languages. This influence leads to the act of borrowing, more or less, a useful words from the English language and recording them in foreign languages. So called loan words, or in the case of words from the English language, uh, anglicisms. Uh, there are a lot of anglicisms which have uh, infiltrated the German language, such as computer, scanner, adapter, aftershave, airline, alien, a baby, band, hacker, jackpot, and etc. Uh, the anglicisms exist in each of the world's top 20 spoken languages. Now let's see the anglicisms in our language. Uh, have you found the words with the same meaning in the text and in your language? Yes. Which ones? Uh, so we have a uh, cool. Okay. Uh, we have a uh, hotel. Okay. Uh, then we have a uh, sexy. Um, <laughs> uh, makeup. Uh, then we have party. Okay, okay. Uh, stress, yeah. club, club, band, band, band. hot dog, okay. sandwich, yeah. hamburger, and a film. Has it always been the case? What happened before English? We have Latin, French, uh, and Spanish as global communication leaders. The last question alluded to the facts about English establishing itself as a global language. So the last question uh, is when did the rise? When did the rise of English start? Okay, this Do you, can you guess? century. Uh, so the correct answer is 19th century. Yes, the geographical excellence of the colonies and the international trade given by the British led to the spread of the English language across continents, from South Asia, Pacific, Asia, to Africa, the Middle East, and Australia. In fact, most former British colonies, such as India, still use English as a language of formal communication and education in, a, in addition to the local dialect. Those are the times when the expansion, uh, expansion of English started. Later on, the USA became the global leader in almost every uh, field ranging. ranging uh, from business, science and technology, and entertainment and sports, which also includes the rise of English worldwide. Thank you so much, everyone. Pretty short quiz we want to present you some facts about the language that is considered as a global language by billions of people worldwide. In many countries, it has become a part of a person's literacy. And the most important thing, if you want to be successful in any kind of profession today, it will be very hard to have English. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll be talking with them. They are, uh, they are, well, they weren't so much afraid, but what we wanted to present today is the importance of English. We started with the global languages, uh, the most spoken language, let's say, in the world, but the most widespread, also English. And not only the most widespread, but also the language that everybody needs if he or she wants to make some kind of success in his or her future today. Yes, yes, yes. that's why uh, we started in global languages, but we ended in English, and I think that everything ends in English when we talk about communication and languages today. Thank you so much. And that's it for today. Last but not the least, uh -huh. you have a little contest here. Yeah. I want to play a short test. Don't stress yourself. It's just uh, five minutes. Five minutes. You have 12 sentences to use the idioms in our, you know, in the right way in these sentences. Look at the sentence first and then think about which idiom is here. And additional bonus question is to write. Some Chinese characters from the beginning of the of One this session, two. 
and what they mean as well. Ovo ćete samo ovdje kada bili kineski. Ne morate kineski. Ovo ćete bili kada bili kineski. Ovo ćete bili kada bili kineski. Ovo ćete Some of them might be in a continuous aspect, like present continuous, or some of them might be in a past tense. So be aware of that. Ja, ja. 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 Ja, ja.
Just cross it out and write somewhere else. That's fine. Well, yeah, so I'm not sure if I have the other. <laughs> 